Eleison imes, Osio, Supatir, Pantocrator, Panagatrias, Eleison imes, have mercy on us about the Father, Pantocrator. For we have no helper in hearts, absent relations but you. O Lord, make us word to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the power of glory be forever. In Christ Jesus our And forgive me and pray for me. Let us pray, my Father's bless, and love for prayer. Peace be with you all. And with your Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him to guard us all peace this holy day and all the days of our life, the Pantocrat or the Lord our God. Let us pray. the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything, for you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Pray that God may have mercy and compassion on us. Hear us, help us, and accept the supplications and prayers of his saints for that which is good on our behalf at all times. And forgive us our our sins. Lord, have mercy. Therefore, we ask and treat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life and all peace with your fear. All envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men arising up of enemies hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people and from this holy church. And from this, your holy place, but those things are good and profitable, do provide for us. For it is you who have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and upon all the power of the enemy. Lord, have mercy. Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Since the beginning, our holy fathers, the archbishops, our fathers, the bishops, our fathers, the hegumens, our fathers, the priests, our brethren, the deacons, our fathers, the monks, and our fathers, the laymen, and for the full repose of Christians, that Christ our God may repose all their souls in a paradise of joy, and we to accord mercy unto us, and forgive us our uh, 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 
وقد لبسوا جسدا وسكنوا في هذا العالم فأنت كصالح ومحب البشر اللهم تفضل يا رب عبيدك المسيحيين الأرثوذكسيين الذين في المسكونة كل من مشارق الشمس إلى مغاربة ومن الشمال إلى الجانو كل واحد باسمه وكل واحدة باسمها يا ربنا يحوم واغفر لهم فإنه ليس أحد طائرا من دانس ولو كانت حياة يوما واحدا على الأرض أما هم يا رب الذين أخذت نفوسهم نيحهم وليحصحق ملكوت السماوات أما نحن كلنا فهب لنا كمالا مسيحيا يرديك أمامك واعطيهم ويانا نصيبا ومراسا مع كافة قدنيسيك بنا مرة Blessed are you, O Lord, God our Father, sincerely blessed and glorified be your name forever. Amen. Lay your mercy, O Lord, be upon us according to our hope in you. For the eyes of the wait upon you, we forgive them their food in due season. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and hope all the regions of the earth. And you, O Lord, keep us safe in this duration forever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach your statutes. Blessed are you, O Lord, bid me understand your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, enlighten me with your righteousness. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Despite not, O Lord, the works of your hands, you have been my refuge from generation to generation. I asked the Lord and said, Have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have fled unto you. Save me, teach me to do your will. For you are my God, with you is the fountain of life. And in your light shall we see light. Let your mercy come unto those who know you, and your righteousness upon a bright heart. 
To you belongs blessings, to you belongs praise, to you belongs glory. O Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, existing from the beginning, now and forever and ever. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises unto your name, O Most High, to show forth your mercy every morning and your righteousness every night. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was born the Virgin, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who was crucified for us, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, who rose from the dead and said in heavens, have mercy upon us. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the age of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, forgive us our sins. O Lord, forgive us our iniquities. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses. O Lord, for the sake of your people, and heal them for the sake of your holy name. Our fathers, brother, have fallen asleep. O Lord, close your souls. O you that have sinned, Lord, have mercy on us. O you that have sinned, Lord, have mercy on us. O you that have sinned, Lord, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, bless us, amen. O Lord, make us work to pray. Thank you, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever, amen. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen, alleluia. Hail to you, we ask you. Blessed are you, and Mother of Christ. Lift up our praise and beloved Son, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to the Holy Virgin who has brought forth unto us the true light, Christ our God. Ask the Lord on our behalf to mercy our souls and forgive us our sins. O Virgin Mary, the Holy Theotokos, the faithful advocate for all mankind. Intercede on our behalf for Christ to be born, they may grant us forgiveness of our sins. Hail to you. Two. 
sing to the Lord a new song. O oh, people who love Christ our God, for he visit us with his salvation as a good one and lover of mankind. We ascribe praise unto you with voices of glorification. O oh, our good Savior, confirm us unto the end. Grant us, O oh Lord, your peace and save us from the hands of our enemies. Humiliate their counsel and heal our sicknesses. Bless the crown of the year with your Lord. goodness, O oh Lord. The rivers and the springs, the plants and the fruits. Bless us in our works with your heavenly blessing and send unto us from on high your grace and your goodness. The afflicted save them, the travelers return them, the bound loosen them, and those who have slept repose them. Lift away your wrath from us and deliver us from inflation and from from the snares of demons, O giver of good things. We praise and glorify him and exalt him above all as the good one and lover of mankind. Have mercy and look forward to your great mercy. The adornment of Mary in the highest heaven at the right hand of her beloved, entreating him on our behalf. As David has said in the book of Psalms, the Queen stood at your right hand, O King. Solomon has called her in the song of songs, my sister and my spouse, my true city, Jerusalem. For he has given a symbol of her in many high names, saying, Come out of your garden, O choices aroma. Hail to you, O virgin, the right and true queen. Hail to the pride of our race, who bore to us in Manuel. We ask you to remember us, who are faithful and broken before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. Seven. Praising as they stand before the Consecrator, serving hidden mystery. Michael is the first, Gabriel is the second, Raphael is the third, a symbol of the Trinity. Seraphim, the thrones, the dominions, and powers, the four incorporeal creatures carrying the throne of God, the twenty-four presbyters in the church of the firstborn, praising him without ceasing, proclaiming and saying, Holy God, he to your people. Holy, 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 O Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. And when they say Alleluia, the heavenly response saying, Holy, Amen, Alleluia, glory be to our God. Intercede on our behalf, O angelic armies and heavenly orders that he may forgive us our sins. Our Lord Jesus Christ has chosen his apostles, Peter and Andrew, John and James, and the rest Philip and Matthew, Bartholomew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Canaanite, Thaddeus and Matthias, Paul, Mark, and Luke, and the rest of the disciples who followed our Savior. Matthias, 
Jesus, who was chosen in place of Judas, all of them and the rest followed the Master. Their voices went forth throughout the face of the whole earth, and their words have reached the ends of the world. Praise to the Lord on our behalf, O my lords and fathers, the apostles, and the seventy-two disciples, that he may forgive us our sins. You have come and enlightened us through your gospel and taught us the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You brought us out of darkness into the true light, feeding us the bread of life that came down from heaven. All the tribes of the earth were blessed through you, and your words have reached the of the world. Hail to you, O martyr, hail to the evangelist, hail to the apostle, mark the beholder of God. Praise to the Lord on our behalf, O beholder of God, the evangelist, mark the apostle, that he may forgive us our sins. Truly you are blessed with the holy Marina, the virgin, the For truly great is the chosen sanctity of St. Varina, the Bride of Christ. She completed her life in her great humility. She reposed with the saints in the land of the living. Hello, the Virgin Maiden, the all-holy adornment, the pure bride. The true Saint Farina, hail to you, O Saint, hail to you, O pure one, hail to you, the ascetic one, the bride of the Master. Ask the Lord on our behalf, O the bride of Christ, the true Saint Farina, that he may forgive us our sins. Watch over us from on high where you dwell, O Lady of us all, the ever Theotokos. Ask of him whom you have borne, our good Savior, to take away our troubles and grant us his peace. Hail to you, O Virgin, the right and true Queen. Hail to the pride of our race, who bore to us Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, O oh, our faithful advocate, before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our sins. We exalt you, the mother of the true light. We glorify you, O Saint Theotokos. He have brought forth unto, unto us to save, save the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory, Glory be to our Master, our King, Christ, the pride of the apostles, crown of the martyrs, joy of the righteous, the firmness of the churches, the gifts of the sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity, one Godhead. We worship Him, we glorify Him. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen. We believe in one God, God the Father, the Pontrol and Tor, creator of heaven and earth and all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, for one essence of the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnated the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man, and he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered, was buried, on the third day rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, ascended to heaven, he sent right unto his Father, and he's coming again his glory to judge the living and the dead. Yes, to believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father, the Father, Son, and Son is and glorified, who is spoken by prophets, the Holy Catholic, the Holy Church, we confess and baptize the Christian sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Passion upon us. Amen. Hear us.
rejoice of the Autocos, the Virgin, the Intercessor of the world, to the Savior, our God, we present praise to Him and we exalt you. Rejoice, O Theotokos, the Virgin, the Mother of Emmanuel, who is not provoked with marriage. Rejoice, O you, is of the rank of the angels. Rejoice, O our intercessor, before our God, the Father, we exalt you. Rejoice, O Theotokos, the Virgin, to you, O God, is to praise in Zion and the vows will be fulfilled to you in Jerusalem. We exalt you, rejoice, O you, full of grace, Mary, O Kyrios Meta. Stavros in Eboraneum, 
Salvation of Noah, hail to you, Mary, the chaste and undefiled. Hail to you, Mary, the grace of Abraham. Hail to you, Mary, the unfading crown. Hail to you, Mary, the redemption of Saint Isaac. Hail to you, Mary, the mother of the holy. Hail to you. Rejoicing of Jacob, hail to you, Mary, Miriam of Miriam, hail to you, Mary, the bride of Judah, hail to you, Mary, the mother of the Master, hail to you, Mary, the preaching of Moses, hail to you, Mary, the mother of the Master. Hail to you, Mary, the honor of Samuel. Hail to you, Mary, the bride of Israel. Hail to you, Mary, the sadness of Job the just. Hail to you, Mary, the precious soul. Hail to you, Mary, the mother of the beloved. Hail to you, Mary, the daughter of King David. Hail to you, Mary, the friend of Solomon. Hail to you, Mary, the exaltation of the righteous. Hail to you, Mary, the redemption of Isaiah. Hail to you, Mary, the healing of Jeremiah. Hail to you, Mary. Knowledge of his Hail to you, Mary, the grace of Daniel. Hail to you, Mary, the power of Elijah. Hail to you, Mary, the grace of Elisha. Hail to you, Mary, the mother of God. Hail to you, Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Hail to you, Mary, the beautiful dove. Hail to you, Mary, the mother of the Son of God. Hail to you, Mary, who was witness by all the prophets. And they said, Behold, God the Word was incarnate of you in an 
Son of the highest, the word itself, through her prayers and intercessions. O Lord, open unto us the gates of the church. I entreat you, O Mother of God, keep the gates of the church open to the faithful. Let us ask her to intercede for us before her beloved that he may forgive us. You are called the Virgin Mary, the only flower of incense, which came out and blossomed from the roots of the patriarchs. Give honor to you, Amar. 
Chase the friend of the sect. Blessed are you, O Saint Verine. You depart is from thieves and accompanied by the. You were loved by everyone. Blessed are you, O Saint Verine. You saw the prayers and the Lord guided you. You lived under His protection. Blessed are you, O Saint Verine. Show like a beacon, O Mother of Virgins. You counseled with great skill. Blessed are you, Saint Verena. You worked as a nurse. 
Jesus curing those with sickness through prayers and a new heart. Blessed are you, O Saint Verena, through prayers resisted Satan. You chose Christ as your groom, the ruler of your heart. Blessed are you, O Saint Verena. The governors rage at you, but you resisted the wicked. You chose the peacemaker. Blessed are you, O Saint Verena. You cured a governor from others. He's not over to a camp. Through prayers and supplications, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. You return to your place to pray with your sisters, to glorify and protect in you, blessed are you, o Saint Verena. You ask for the food with fervent prayers, and the flower you found in heaps, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. Your fame reached people, so you fight for your salvation. To the Lord the cornerstone, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. You fled to an island where serpents were about, and paths that were difficult, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. You prayed and called upon he whom you loved, and he overshadowed you, blessed are you. You ministered with love to enemies and friends, imitating your Lord, blessed are O Saint Verena. You served the poor and supported the weary. Your life was a life, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. You cared for everyone, guiding them to the Lord. In tribulation you pray, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. You were falsely accused and snares were set up for you. The King of Ages saved you, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. Solitude you have chosen, asceticism you have practiced, and you cared for everyone. Blessed are you, O Saint Verena. The mother of light appeared to you with a lot of incense, as the Lord commanded. Blessed are you, O Saint Verena. You departed in peace from the world fraught with suffering. Your mission was complete, blessed are you, O Saint Verena. Remember us before Jesus, O chaste and bright, the hidden treasure. Blessed are you, O Saint Verena. The mention of your name is in all the believers' mouth. They all say, O God of Saint Verena,
flying up to the heights when this day. Remember us before the Lord that he may forgive us our sins. The sick, O oh Lord, heal them, those who have slept, repose them and all our brethren in distress. Help us, my Lord, and all of them. May God bless us and let us bless his holy name. And may his praise be always on our lips. Let's be the Father. of all ages who has granted us this amazing gift full of glory which is the relics of Saint Verena who had strived well for your name's sake expelled all the power of the enemy and carried her holy cross for the sake of the heavenly dwellings of life and now her holy lyrics is venerated on earth in this honored church where we worship you you have also granted her healing spring, springs to cure all sickness in the people and expel evil spirits. Now, O oh good master, lover of mankind, we ask and entreat you through the fightings of this holy saint, which she has done for your blessed name, to give us health through her holy relics and to grant us, O oh, our Savior, and to all those who worship you in this church, salvation, forgiveness of sins, healing to our souls, bodies, and spirits, and to give them and us a good portion and salvation, that we may glorify you, O Christ our God, with your good Father and the Holy Spirit, the life giver, whose one essence with you, now and forever, on the age of all ages. Amen. Shli, let us pray. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Oh, Master Lord Jesus Christ, our God, who said to us and our disciples and all the apostles, Souls, many prophets and righteous men have desired to see the things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things which you hear and have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes for they see, and your ears for they hear. Maybe also to hear and to act according to your holy gospel through the prayers of you. Saints, remember also our master, those who have been asked to their supplications and prayers. Which we offer up unto you, O Lord, our God, those already fallen asleep, repose them. Those who are sick, heal them. For you are the life of us all, salvation of us all, the hope of us all, the healing of us all, and the resurrection and of us all. Psalm of David say, Alleluia. to do 
Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Saying, do not touch my anointed ones. And do my prophets no harm, alleluia. Let them exalt him in the church of his people. And praise him in the seat of the elders. For he has made their family like a flock of sheep. The bright shall see and rejoice. The Lord has sworn and will have no regret. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand, our saintly father, the patriarch, Pope Abba Tawadros the second, and our father, the Bishop Abba Yusuf. May the Lord keep your lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness. Listen to the Holy Gospel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord of hosts. Bless, O Lord, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke the Evangelist and the Holy Disciples. May his holy blessing. into the Holy Gospel, a reading from the Gospel according to our teacher, St. Luke the Evangelist, may his blessing A certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him, so he went and sat down to eat. When the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Then the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, Make the outside of the cup and dish clean, but your inward part is full of greed and wickedness. Foolish ones, did not he who made the outside make the inside also, but rather give alms of such things as you have then indeed all things are clean to you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe 
not mint and rue and all manner of herbs and pass by justice and love of God. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Woe to you Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like graves which are not seen, and the men who walk over them are not aware of them. Then one of the lawyers answered and said to him, Teacher, by saying these things you reproach us also. And he said, Woe to you also, lawyers, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. In fact, you bear witness that you approve the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you build their tombs. Therefore, the wisdom of God also said, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute. That the blood of all prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the temple. Yes, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. As God the Bantu Creator, the Father, of Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, the peace of your only one, Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Pray for the peace of the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. Lord, have mercy. Uh, 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 
see. This which exists one end of the world, end of the world to the other, for most of them are on a patriarch and father, arch priest, Pope Abba Tawadris II, the spiritual brother, the patriarch of Antioch, one from the second, and as part of the apostolic service, our father, the bishop, Abba Yu, oh, 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 Pray for our archpriest, Pope Abba Tawadris II, Pope and patriarch and archbishop of the great city of Alexandria, and his spiritual brother, Apostolic Liturgy, the Patriarch of Antioch, Marcinatius of Ephraim II, and in his partner, Apostolic Liturgy, our Father, the Bishop of Yusuf, and for Orthodox Bishops. Lord, have them secure for us for many years and peaceful time. Remember, O oh Lord, the salvation of this your holy place and every place and every monastery of our Orthodox Fathers. Pray for the salvation of the world and of the city of ours and of all cities, districts, islands, and monasteries. Aries. Lord have mercy. And every city and every country and the villages and all their adornment. And save us all from famine, plague, earthquake, drowning fire, captivity by the barbarians, the sword of the stranger and the rising up of heretics. Lord, have mercy. Graciously accord all daughters of the river this year to year that Christ our God may bless them and raise them according to their measure that he may give joy to the face of the earth sustain us the sons of men save the cattle and forgive us our uh, uh, sins Lord have mercy Lord have mercy Lord have To their measure, according to your grace, give joy to the face of the earth. May its flowers be abundantly water, and his fruit be plentiful. Prepared for sowing and harvesting, manage our life as deem fit. Bless the crown of the year with your goodness, for the sake of the poor of your people, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of us all, who entreat you and seek your holy name. The eyes of everyone wait upon you, for you give them their food in due season. Deal with us according to your goodness to you who give food to all flesh. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness that we to have insufficiency in everything always may abound in every good deed. Lord, have mercy. Again, let us ask God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind. Remember, O Lord, our assemblies bless them. Lord, have mercy. Grant that they may be to us without obstacle or hindrance, that we may hold them according to your holy and blessed will. 
houses of prayers, houses of purity, houses of blessings. Grant them to us, O Lord, and your servants will come after us forever. The worship of idols utterly uproot from the world. Satan and all his evil powers trample and humiliate them under our feet speedily. The offenses and their instigators abolish. Let the dissensions of corrupt heresies cease. The enemies of your holy church, O Lord, as at all times they also humiliate. Strip their vanity. Show them their weaknesses speedily. Break to not their envies, their intrigue, their madness, their wickedness, and the slanders which they commit against us. O Lord, bring them all to no avail. Disperse their counsel. O God, who disperses the counsel of Ahitho. O Phil. Lord, Let all your enemies be scattered, and let all who hate your holy name flee before your face. But let your people be in blessing, thousand of thousand, and ten thousand times ten thousand, doing your will. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In Christ Jesus our Lord, before you, O Lord. Peace be with all. With your spirit. O Master, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son and Logos of God the Father, who has broken every bond of our sins through his saving and life-giving sufferings, who breathed in the face of his holy disciples and saintly apostles, and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. They also now are Master through your holy apostles. Have given grace to those for time labor in the priesthood in your holy church to forgive sins upon the earth and to bind and to lose bond of iniquities. We ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, for your servants, those about their heads before your holy glory. Dispense unto us your mercy, those who want for iniquities. If we have committed any sin against you, knowing and knowing through anxious heart, or indeed, or in word, or from faint heartedness, O Master, who knows the weakness of men as a good one, O lover of my God, O God, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. Bless us, purify us, absolve us, and all your people fill us with your fear. Straighten us unto your good will, for you are our God, glory, honor, dominion, and worship. Our due to you together with the Father, Holy Spirit, now and forever, on the age of ages. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I'd like to wish you all a very blessed and happy feast of Saint Verena, the saint of this blessed church. Saint Verena was a nurse 
and she accompanied uh, the legend from Tiba when they were in Switzerland and uh, the head or the commander, the leader of this legend was Saint Maurice. And what happened after they won the war, so the king ordered them to offer incense to the idols, but they refused. And they were almost 60,000 or more. So in order to scare them and to force them to offer incense to the idol, he made the 6,000 soldier to stand in rows. And he took number 10 and scourged him. And after this, he and beheaded him, hoping that by doing this, he will make the rest of the soldiers get scared. But what happened? Actually, he did this with the 6,000 soldiers. And no one of them denied his faith. So the last soldier saw before him 5,999 soldiers killed. And he did not deny his faith. That's how the Copts are strong in their faith. San Verena, after she witnessed this, she decided to remain in Switzerland and to repay hatred with love. Blood and sword with service. So she used her profession as a nurse to serve the people. And she served them. And through serving the people in Switzerland, she preached to them Christianity. And start people believe in Christ when they saw this angelic scene. When the king heard about her, he arrested her and put her in prison. But this did not actually shake her faith. After some time, she was released, and many virgins surrounded her and lived with her to be like her disciples. And she lived the rest of his, her life preaching Christ and serving the people in Switzerland. Switzerland. She is very known and she is very loved in Switzerland. They built uh, a church in the place of the cave in which she lived. And there is actually the icon of St. Verena or his statue. She carrying comb and pitcher of water. Because that is what actually she used to teach the people in Switzerland, hygiene and personal hygiene and help them in medicine. So her story actually inspired us about how to serve and how to evangelize. Saint Verena was not uh, a priest or a deacon. She was a nurse. But she used her gift, her talent, her, profession, her profession to serve the people. So each one of us can be like Saint Verena and can preach the name of Christ to the people around us. Uh, evangelism and preaching comes from a heart that loves God 
and loves others. And because of this love, he has a sincere desire to save the souls and to bring the souls to our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is the Savior. I cannot save any soul. Jesus is the Savior. So evangelism is about want to get the people and connect them with the true Savior in order to be saved and to have eternal life. So we can say evangelism or the essence of evangelism are three points. Number one, to explain to the people the problem. The problem is sin that separated us from God. And the wages of sin is death. And how no one is without sin, even if his life on earth is a single day. All of us who are born with the original sin. So all of us, without exception, we need a savior. So that's the first point. Second point, the solution. First point, the problem. Second point, the solution. The solution is the salvation that Christ fulfilled. He is the Lamb of God who carried the sins of the whole world. And he gave us his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. That is the problem. If you want to be saved, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to him. Accept his free gift of salvation. Then your sins will be forgiven. And the third point, what is your stand regarding the problem and salvation? What are you going to do? You have two options. Either to reject and to deny the salvation, which means you are denying your eternal salvation, or to accept the salvation and how to show our acceptance by believing and repenting and living the life of the church. St. Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4, he told him, Preach the word in due season. Sorry, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Be ready in season and out of season. So when we preach at any time, anywhere, at work, in the neighborhood, in our celebration. Any moment, God actually will give you many, many opportunities to preach and to share the good news of salvation. In order to be evangelists, we need to have some attributes or some virtues. As we know, evangelism is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. One of the gifts. As we read in Ephesians chapter 4, he gave some to be apostles, some to be preachers, some to be pastors, some to be evangelists. So there is difference between all of us. We have to preach and to share the good news of salvation and people who dedicate their life to this ministry, ministry of evangelism. 
For those who dedicate their life completely to be full-time consecrated for evangelism, they have to be called from God and to receive this gift from God. And how do you know that you have this gift or this calling from God? When the heart is burning with zeal toward the salvation of everyone, when the person, actually like St. Paul, when he went to Athens and saw the city is full of idols, he was burning from inside. He was troubled in the spirit to see all these people are worshiping idols. And here is a salvation, the free salvation that the Lord offered to the people. People ignore it. So, to be called means you have this zeal, burning zeal inside your heart for the salvation of everyone. Also, another point, to be convicted by your mission. When you believe in your mission, when you believe in your calling, you will overcome any obstacle through the grace of God. You will not find in these obstacles excuses. St. Paul, if you want to find excuses, there were many excuses. In his letter to the Corinthians, he explains the challenges and the dangers that he went through but none of these dangers, none of these risks stopped him from doing his calling, preaching the gospel. Even when he was in trial, standing before governors and kings, he did not use this time to defend himself, rather to preach as what he did with King Agrippa. And King Agrippa, he told him, you are about to persuade me to be Christian. He told him, yes, not only you, but all those who are attending. I want you to be like me, Christian, but without these chains. So St. Paul overcame all the obstacles because he had great conviction in his calling, relying on the grace of God. Also, he had vision. He had vision what he was going to do. If you read his speech in Acts chapter 20, you will understand his vision, how he did not burden the people, how he wanted to make the gospel of Christ available for free. How he gave more than he received. How he was warning the people with tears and humbleness. How he did not talk to the people as one superior to them. I am coming to teach you. No, he served them with all meekness and humbleness how he was not tempted by their gold or silver. He had vision. In every church, in every, every city, he established churches. He appointed elders in these areas. And he followed up with them. Visitation, after the first mission trip, he said to Barnabas, let us go and visit each city in which we preach the word of God and to see how they were doing. So the vision was very clear what he, wa he should do as evangelist was very clear in his eyes. Also you can see 
how St. Paul was growing in his spirituality. Because unless I grow, the ministry will not grow. I have to grow. Some people said, St. Paul, in the beginning of his service, he said, aren't they apostles? I say that I am better than them. So in the beginning of his ministry, he said, I am better than the rest of the apostles. When he grew in his spiritual life, then he said, I am not worthy to be an apostle. When he grew more in his spiritual life, he said, I who was a persecutor and blasphemer. And at the end of his life, he said, I am the first among the sinners. This actually indicates how he was growing spiritually. Because the more the person grow, the more humble he becomes. In the beginning, he said, I am better than the rest of the apostles. At the end, he said, I am the first among the sinners. St. Paul also was a spiritual person. So spirituality is a very important element in the evangelist. And we can see this characteristic also in St. Verena. She felt the calling from God. That's why she stayed as a foreigner in a foreign country. It was in her ability to return back to Egypt. But she decided to remain in this foreign country not for any gain, but to serve the people. As I told you, many challenges actually faced her. She was arrested and imprisoned, but all these challenges did not shake her commitment to the service. She had a vision, and she used his profession by helping the people. And while she was helping the people, she talked to them about Christ. She was growing in her spirituality. And because of her spirituality and her humbleness and meekness, people loved her and accepted to be Christian because of her spirituality. She was like an angel living among them. Satan will try actually to attack our ministry. And he will use some techniques that are very well known in order to convince us not to continue in our mission as evangelists. The first technique he is using is fear. He will make us afraid of the authorities, afraid to say the word of the truth, afraid to testify for Christ, and maybe we like to be politically correct in order not to suffer. This fear made Peter deny Christ three times. This fear made some uh, preachers try to uh, please the Judaizers and accept the circumcision and all the tradition of the Old Testament. One of these people was St. Peter and St. Paul. When Peter actually saw people coming from Jerusalem. He refused to eat with the Gentiles. And St. Paul confronted him. And he told him, why you are living as a hypocrite? And confronted Barnabas too. So, 
we should not allow Satan to instill fear in our heart. Should be strong and courageous, getting our strength from the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. As the Lord said to the disciples, don't depart from Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. Another attack is the attack of embarrassment. Our youth right now, in, in this ungodly culture, maybe they are embarrassed to admit they live pure, they live virgins until they get married. They don't uh, conform to the styles of the world. So this embarrassment can be a challenge to embarrass, to be embarrassed to admit who I am. But the Lord Jesus Christ in Mark chapter 8 and verse 38, he said, For whoever is ashamed of me, ashamed or embarrassed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Don't be ashamed that you are a son of God. Don't be ashamed that you are following the Christian morals. Don't be ashamed to defend the truth in this adulterous and sinful generation. Another attack that Satan is using is the temptation of the world. He will try actually to tempt us and to pull us back to the world. There was a preacher with St. Paul. His name was Demas. But St. Paul referred to him and said, Demas has left me because he loved the contemporary world. The church every time after the Catholic letter reminds us, do not love the world or the things which are in the world. Satan even tried to use this with the Lord Jesus Christ when he told him, I will give you all these kingdoms and all its positions if you worship me. He tried to tempt him with the pleasures of the world. Another thing is our ego and our pride. Definitely in the ministry, the, the successful ministry needs a humble person. But Sometimes Satan is attacking us with pride. Either people praise us for who we are and what we are achieving, or Satan is tempting us to seek uh, praise from people. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus' sake. St. Paul was very clear that he is not preaching himself. He is not seeking his own glory, but he is preaching Christ. And him as a bond servant, bond servant means a slave. A slave. When we understand this, actually, we will be committed to the ministry of evangelism and uh, regardless of the humiliation that we may receive. Yes, in ministry, we'll be humiliated, we'll be attacked, we'll be spoken against. People will a blaspheme against us and they will ridicule us but 
a true evangelist understand his service, he doesn't care because he is not seeking approval from men. He is seeking approval from God. God actually honors the evangelists and God uh, rely on us in the ministry of evangelism. <coughs> he said to the disciples, you will be my witnesses. You will be my witness means God is trusting us to witness for him. To bear witness for him and to testify the truth of the gospel in front of the other people. What honor? Can you imagine if I tell you I trust you with this project? I'm sure when somebody tells you I trust you with this project, you don't want to disappoint them. What about God? He told us, I will trust you with this ministry. I will trust you to be my witness and to share the good news of salvation with others. Are we trustworthy? Are we living up to this trust or not? God gave us authority. He said to the disciples, I received all authority. Go and make disciples of all nations. So as I received authority, I'm giving you authority to go to bind and to lose. He gave authority to the priesthood to forgive sins on earth. He gave authority to bind and to lose, give us authority over the scorpions and the serpents, over Satan and all his soldiers and all his powers. You have authority from God. He gave us also the word of God, which is sharper than two-edged sword. He did, that, he did not send us without swords, without weapons, but our weapons are spiritual, not physical weapons. And we are using these weapons like the word of God, which pierces the heart of the people. Like on the day of Pentecost, Peter quote many verses from the Old Testament. And these words pierced the heart of the people. 3,000 persons said, we believe in Christ in one sermon. And the Lord told you, all what I need from you is to do your part, nothing more. The sower is nothing. And the one who waters is nothing, but it is God who actually make the produce, make the growth. So whether I am one who sows the seed or water the seed, it is God who makes the increase. Do your part and rely on God. Evangel through evangelism, the church grow. There are three types of growth inside the church. Because sometimes you say our church is growing. Our church can be growing because of immigration. People move from one state to another state or from one country to another country. Or church can grow because of the children who grow and get married and, and so on. So the family grow. But this is not the exact growth of evangelism. Either our church is growing because family are growing their children growing and getting married and have children and so on, or because of immigration. The real growth of the church, the growth that we read about in the book of Acts, when God adds to the church every day those who are saved. So how many souls added to the church? Don't count those who immigrate as growth. 
Don't count those who are born in the church as growth. But the real growth, those who are added to the church, the Lord added to the church every day those who are saved. Then how to preach to those who are different, different from us, whether they are not Christian, atheist, they follow other religion. You need to use words they understand. St. Paul, when he was preaching to the Jews, he preached from the Old Testament. But when he went to Athens to the Gentiles, he spoke from their philosophy, their poems. He did not use one verse from the Old Testament because you don't believe in the Old Testament. Understand their culture and understand their mind and how they are thinking in order to be able to address them. Also study their needs because as we say in the divine liturgy which is taken from the letters of St. Paul, when we have sufficiency in everything, we will abound in every good deed. That's why the Lord healed the sick, fed the multitude. He actually gave them what they need in order to grow in every good work. When actually we attend to the needs of the people, whether uh, materialistic needs or psychological needs or we help them in treatment etc we don't do this as a charitable activity but it is part of our evangelism it's part of our ministry because when the people have sufficiency in everything they will abound in every good deed The last point I like to speak about it, to commit to in order for our ministry to be successful. Number one, prayer. Because without prayer, we will be powerless. Prayer is the door to the grace of God. And as he said, without me, you cannot do anything. St. Paul in his letters, he mentioned several times, I pray for you day and night. So his ministry was successful because he was a man of prayer. Number two, love. St. Augustine said, you cannot save except to those who love you. Use the power of love in order to capture their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Love is a very powerful tool. As St. Paul said, we love him because he loved us. St. Verena, when she loved the people and served them because she loved them, she was all able to capture their souls to Christ. Maybe she was not a theologian, but she had the power of love. That's why she was able to convert a country through the power of her love. Also, you need to keep the balance between being courageous in the testimony and showing respect to others. Even to those who are different from you, you need to show respect to them. Don't belittle them. If you don't respect them, you will lose them, even if you have the truth. Nowadays, on the social media, many people claim they have the truth. And they disrespect the other group. Even if they have the truth, but if they don't show 
respect to others, their truth is nothing. Because the true truth is a loving truth. Christ, he said, I am the truth. And Christ is God, and God is love. So there is love in the truth. If there is truth in which there is no love, then it is falsehood. Anyone who tries to tell you that he has the truth, but he doesn't show love and respect, that's falsehood. Also, you need to have the word of God dwelling in you richly. As I told you, this is our weapon. This is our sword that we will use to pierce the hearts of the people. The word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. sword. How can you preach while you are poor? in the word of God. St. Paul said, let the word of God dwell richly in you. Not as intellectual knowledge, but as a life. The Lord said, my words are spirit and life. You need to live the word of God before preaching it. Also, you need to be generous in giving. I'm not speaking about only giving materialistic, but you need to be generous when you give from your time, when you give from your attention, from you give from your counsel, from you, you, you teach the people, the, the Christian principles. You need to be generous. St. Paul said, I did not delay to tell you about all the counsel of God. He did not hide anything. He shared with the people all his experience. He shared with the people all what he learned from the Lord when he was in Arabia. Also, when you change bad habits, like how the Lord changed the Sabbath through preaching and teaching and convincing, although they attacked him and they said about him, he has the head of demons, but his style is to be patient and to discuss with the people and to convince them with logic and to explain to them the Sabbath means rest, which means God will be rested in us. When you heal somebody, this actually, you give him rest. So, when we speak about bad habits in the life of others, we need to be patient, gentle, use persuasion, talk and conver converse with them. And also, gently try to switch their goals to be spiritual goals and instead of want to have uh, social goals or worldly goals, let their goal be the kingdom of God. As the Lord told us, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added to you. This is what San Verena did. This is what the Samaritan woman did. This is what the Samaritan woman simply did not preach herself. Actually, she confessed her sins. 
she said to the people, come and see. One told me all things that I have done. And of course, they know her, her story. She was adulterous. So the true evangelist will say to the people, come and see. Like what Philip said to Nathaniel, come and see. Like the Samaritan woman, come and see. That's the true evangelist, to bring the people to Christ. May the prayers of St. Verena, this great saint, who preached to Switzerland Christianity through her love, through her humbleness, through her sincere service. May her life uh, inspire all of us to preach the word of God with others and to add the church every day, those who are saved. May God bless all of us through her prayers. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of the ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, O our Lord Jesus Christ, bless the crown of the year with your goodness, O Lord the rivers, the springs, the plants, and the fruits. Save us and have mercy on us. You have, Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us, amen. Bless me, bless me. Lord, the repentance, forgive me. Say the blessing. Christ our God. Amen. So be it. O King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish us your peace, forgive us our sins. For yours is the power, glory, blessing, and majesty forever. Amen. O Lord, make words to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, communion and gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Uh, this